everybody, this is David again with another Verilog FPGA video. Uh, previously, I did some videos on the VGA. The, the first thing I did was create a, a VGA controller and then test it to make sure it works. And then I used that VGA controller in another uh, project and drew the no signal screen on the screen um, using boundary locations for X and Y. I think the next step in this journey of learning the VGA is to go into object animation and collision detection. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. I got a couple more slides to go through that hits on main points, and then I'll go into the Verilog code, and then we'll generate the bitstream, program it on the basis three, and see it happening on the screen. All right, so main points about this. It's like um, so changing an object's location from scan to scan creates the illusion of movement. Just like, I don't know if you ever taken like the little notepads and drawn like stick fingers on each page. And then each page as you go through, you're updating the image just a little bit. So then now when you flip through it, it appears you're creating that illusion that the image is moving. We're going to do the same thing here. Um, same concept. So in our case, the screen is refreshed. 60 times a second at 60 hertz rate so each time the screen is redrawn we just update the object's location only to only a few pixels away in whatever direction we want it to move and then it's going to be and every time the screen is refreshed we're just moving that image uh, to a different location and then as it's going through and in, in, in the real time speed it creates that illusion that it's moving across the screen. Uh, instead of using constants to define the object's boundaries, we're going to use registers to track the X and Y coordinates of the object and then increment and decrement those to for each scan. So we're going to use four registers to track the top, left, right, bottom locations of the object. And then on each scan, the registers are updated by incrementing or decrementing by a couple of pixels, like I said, depending on the direction of movement. Um, so now for an action upon a collision, that is the edge of, we're going to, I'm going to draw a square and have it move around the screen. So in this case, the edge of the square, when it touches any edge of the display area, um, so it's moving by velocity values. So each refresh we're incrementing, let's say we're, we're incrementing X and we're incrementing Y, which means we're moving towards the bottom right of the screen. If you. Um, pay attention to my mouse here. So across the horizontal, we have 640 pixels. Down here, we have 480. And the top left is 0, 0. So if both of those registers are incremented the by 2, every screen refresh, the image has moved by 2 pixels down in the X and right, or right in the X and down in the Y. Now, when that edge hits the bottom of the screen, we just want to instead of incrementing our y value we want to switch it over to now decrement our y value so it'll bounce off here and it's still moving to the right but now it's going back up because we're decrementing our y values now when that right edge hits the of the square hits the right edge, edge of the display screen we have another collision at pixel uh, 639 and now instead of incrementing the x we just want to switch it over to decrement the X so it starts moving back away and we'll keep it the square inside of our display screen okay now that I've gone through this let me take you over to the code okay here I am in Vivado I've created a basis 3 project uh, using Verilog as a target language you can see the module hierarchy right here um, just two modules inside a top so the VGA controller the same one I've I built or created a couple videos ago. It's the same one I'm going to continue using because it works and it's great. And we have the pixel generation to go through all the stuff to move the square, draw it, and all that. And then the top to tie the two together. Here's the constraints file. So let me go through. I'm um, not going to go through the VGA controller again. It's the same exact one. So if you were, if you did the previous videos, um, or if you're starting on this one, you can copy this one down. I'm not going to go through it. So now we come to the pixel generation. So we have our clock. This is actually the 100 megahertz from the basis three uh, reset button. And then this is what comes from the VGA controller. Those, the video on to let it, this circuit know it's in the display area. 
uh, or the pixel values are, and then the actual pixel values for horizontal and vertical, which I call X and Y, and then the 11 bits of the RGB to drive the uh, RGB colors to the VGA controller. <clears throat> All right, let's do this. So here's some parameters. So X max, um, this is specifically for the collision, right? So we're going to check the edge of our square is at the horizontal max. Um, which is 639, the Y max is 479, and then I'm going to set some parameters to assign uh, just colors. The square is going to be yellow, so it's a mixture of red and green, and I'm just going to have a blue background, so it's just all the blue on. Uh, the square size is going to be, this is the width of it in pixels, what's well, the height and width, right? The square has all same size, so 64, and then this is our velocity, like I talked about. This is what we're going to change the value of the register to every time we refresh. It's either going to be a positive value or a negative value, and it's going to be by two pixels. So if we want the square to move faster, we'll increase this value. If we want it to move slower, then, well, the slowest we can go is one. So we're just going to. Um, so to update the square every refresh, I'm going to create a refresh tick. So that's what this is right here. It's a wire to refresh tick. And you can pretty much set this up to happen anywhere. Um, I'm going to do it outside of the display area. So whenever we go into the start of the vertical retrace or the V-Sync. So at pixel 48, uh, 481 in the Y direction. And when X is 0, I'm just going to tick it. And every time it's redrawn 60 times, we're going to have this tick. So this tick will happen 60 times a second. This, we're gonna, uh, this is the tick we're going to base uh, updating our drawing on. So I'm going to create some registers and wires for buffering. <clears throat> just like you know we did before for the buffering. It's, um, so let me go through this. So... This is XL, if you will, the left boundary, XR, square XR, square Y top, square Y bottom. So these are our signals for the boundaries that we will assign based on positions in a minute. So, And so here's the square X reg. The Y reg is to track the top left um, position and then the next for buffering and then this delta is where we're storing our velocity uh, speed into that so this value is going to be added to the x reg and this value is going to be added to the y reg to change that every screen refresh so all the register controls if on the positive edge or reset if we have reset we're going to set them all to zero except for the delta reg which is going to be set to two because that's what we want our speed to start at before we have a collision and i'll show you this it's going to change when we have a collision but we want it to start at two um, so it's going to be moving towards the bottom right of the screen um, so this is just the buffering of the wires to the registers right here uh, so here's our square boundaries. So we're going to take the the left boundary is going to be the value of the X register, and the and the top boundary is going to be the value of the Y register. And then the right is the that value of the left plus the square size of 64 pixels minus one. So including this value plus 63, we have 64 pixels. Uh, in the horizontal and the same thing for the y bottom it's 63 pixels away from the top edge um, this is our status signal for when we know that our pixels are within the square boundary we have the square signal on to control the rgb so this is how this signal gets set so if the left um, is less than our x value coming from the vga controller and our right um, is greater than the X, the top is less than the Y, and the Y is less than the bottom. So we've created a nice little square area um, based on our pixel locations. And then this is how we update the, the next square position. So every time we're on that refresh tick, we're gonna take that square X register, which is the left value, uh, and then we're gonna increment it by whatever the value of our, our delta x is. And same thing with y, we're gonna increment our y. So this could be negative two or positive two. So we're either incrementing by subtracting or incrementing. 
Uh, and then this is how we control the X and Y deltas. Um, so we just use an always block, capture all changes. We're going to start the values off. The next is the register, but then we're going to change it. So this is where we have a collision. So if the top edge is less than one, right, that top edge value or the Y, then we know we've collided with the top of the display edge. And then we want Y delta next to be the square velocity positive. So we want it to be plus two because if it's moving up and it hits the top, it's subtracting. Now we want to add two to move it back down. And that's how all this stuff is set up here. If we hit the bottom, we want the negative. So we want to subtract Y to move it back up. If we hit the left, we want to add so we can move it back to the right. If we hit the right, which is the, the max 639, then we want to move it back to the left. And then this is how we control the RGB values for the square in the background. So if, the, if we're in the display area, if we're not in the display area from this video on signal, then we'll just send no value outside of the display area. Now, if we're in the display area, if we're in the square on, if we're in that area, we're going to set RGB to our square color, else it's going to be the background color. So only the square will be this color and then the rest will be this color, which is blue. So it's not, it's a lot of code. It's not a lot of code. It's not, it is a little tricky, but it's not bad. Now let's go to the top. <clears throat> so here's the clock 100 megahertz coming in, the reset button. These are what's going out to the VGA ports, the A-Sync, the V-Sync, which comes from the VGA controller, our RGB value to the DAC, which can uh, gets converted into three bits to the VGA port, create some wires to connect the modules. The, the VGA controller drives the pixel generation. Here's our video on connections, X and Y. H-Sync and V-Sync comes right out through to the top. And then there's a register and a next, just like I did in the last one. The RGB that's being driven from pixel generation is a register. We're going to bring it in here and capture it in this top in wires. And then right here, this wire. And then so that at these signals synchronization here, we got the clock. And then if P tick, which means we're in the display area, or actually no, just every pixel tick. Um, so 25 megahertz versus the 100 um, whatever that the rgb value from the pixel generation will get set in the register here and that register drives the rgb that is outputted from the top <clears throat> here's the constraints file we got the clock 100 megahertz here's all our rgbs change all the names to rgb uh, a 12 bit here's our h sync and v sync here's our button i'm using button c you can use whatever button you want all right, I'm going to go ahead and program the board, and then I'll show you it on the screen. All right, so the board's programmed. You can see it working on the screen. So we have a 64 pixel square um, moving across the screen um, in diagonal directions by 2 pixels X, 2 pixels Y. And then every time it hits the edge of the screen, we're going to change its direction. So, yeah, not really exciting, but... This was a, a lesson in moving objects using VGA and also collision detection. So that was the whole point of it. So there you go. I hope this helps um, your VGA journey. So from here, I think I can go into making a game. There's one thing I want to do, uh, another screen with some squares, but then I'm going to go into making a game and using the basis three to like, and the buttons to control a paddle, and maybe create like a little table tennis game or something. But that's it for this one. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. Bye.